Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. Most of us have seen movies or television shows where sharks have been portrayed as marauders who prey on unsuspecting swimmers or smaller fish in the sea. But many Wild Kingdom episodes illustrate how sharks and other predators are an important part of the food chain in our underwater world. Oceans cover 70% of our planet, yet we still have much to learn about this important ecosystem. Modern technology has enhanced our ability to study the ocean with minimal disruption to their habitat. Human involvement in recent legislation to protect underwater creatures allow for their resurgence. There's more good news to come in the Wild Kingdom, so sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Hello, welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I've just returned from a most exciting and unusual sea hunt in the Pacific Ocean. It all took place on this 41-foot vessel, the Geronimo. This ship is used by marine land of the Pacific to capture porpoises, moray eels, sharks, and other specimens for their famous oceanarium. The men of the Geronimo are experts at capturing marine animals and use a strange assortment of equipment. This bottle, for example, contains a special drug that'll anesthetize fish if you time it just right. With these tongs, you can capture more dangerous animals if you're quick enough. And on the bow of this boat is a unique piece of equipment used to capture the smartest mammal of the ocean. Let me show you. First, you get in this basket on the bow here. And if you know how to use this, a combination net lasso, you can catch a porpoise, Western style. It takes a little luck and lots of skill. Our adventure started when I arrived at the Marine Land Pier. The crew of the Geronimo was all set to go. It's good to see old friends again. John Prescott, Marine Land's curator, and Captain Frank Brocato, director of collections. We get underway while Boots Calandrino, skipper of the Geronimo, is still saying howdy and head for the high seas. Captain Frank sights a disturbance in the waters to starboard. Porpoises. They're on the move, and it's clear that we won't be able to get close enough to catch any of them today. But there are other marine specimens to be caught, and the skipper knows just where to go looking for them. In the waters off this desolate island are some of the strangest fish in the Pacific Ocean. As we come to anchor, everyone makes ready. Cameraman Ralph Nelson goes first. A last minute adjustment of equipment with John Prescott, who'll do the catching today, then in we go. Every time one dives, it's a thrill, whether you've done it once or a hundred times. 
you feel you've crossed the threshold into another world, a wonder world of half-light and shadow, a universe where danger always lurks. The camera's light illuminates some of its wonders, bright colored fish and underwater life, every hue of the rainbow, such as these sea anemone, flower-like, plant-like, but really animals, catching food with their tentacles. There are also dull-colored crustaceans, like this cancer crab. Our hunt begins. John's going to anesthetize fish by spraying them with a drug from that rubber bottle next to his air tank. And I don't want to miss this unique action. That's a tree fish. And there goes the drug. But where's the fish? Ah, there it is. The drug's taken effect. It's not easy transferring it from the net to the plastic holding bag. And I hurry to lend a hand. But John's doing just fine. Our first rare captive is a little befuddled, but quite unharmed. The hunt takes us deeper. The fish we're after live on the bottom, 12 fathoms below the surface. Next, a rare convict fish, trapped in the milky white drug. They suffer no hardship in the plastic bag because there's enough water in it for them to breathe comfortably. With the help of the cameraman's lights, John finds another specimen, a scorpion fish. While he's busy with it, I hurry back to the surface. He must be extra careful. One jab of those poisoned dorsal spines could paralyze him. I must get the equipment ready for the next capture while John completes this one. A whiff of air from his tank, close the bag, and it rises like a balloon to the surface. John's seen a moray eel. He'll need the tongs and a lot of luck if he's going to catch it. That one, yeah. Okay, yeah. Morays are vicious and can bite your hand off if you're not careful. Once it reaches the surface, the moray eel puts up a terrific struggle. Transferring it isn't easy, but at last it's safe on board. This fighting moray is a great prize, but we still haven't caught the greatest prize of all, a porpoise.
We had all the specimens we wanted, except the most important one. Then we got a radio report that porpoises had been sighted farther south. We raced to the position. Equipment was checked and rechecked. We didn't want anything to go wrong when our chance came to net a porpoise. When the porpoise goes into this net and lasso at the end of the pole, the lasso tightens around its body so it can't escape. The way Boots Calandrino explains it, it sounds simple, but I'm sure it's not going to be quite so easy. So we head south. Benny Falcone rechecks the line from the lasso. If it should get tangled, we can say goodbye to the porpoise. Boots goes out to his catching position. We're all set for action. To the south, John Prescott in the helicopter is trailing the porpoises and radioing their position back to us so that we can intercept their course. Even with a copter, it's difficult following them because they keep altering direction. One minute they're there, and then before you know it, they've disappeared. And you have to hunt and try to guess their new course. Also, they swim at a terrific speed, 30 knots, as fast as a Navy destroyer. The sunlight reflected off the waves adds to the difficulties of the spotters. At last, the great school of porpoises nears a position where we can intercept them. The news is radioed back. Read you fine, John. Over. Fine, John, got your position. One mile south of our present position now, and we'll head that way immediately. The school is less than a mile south of us now. Excitement builds as we race towards the interception point. Everyone is keyed up and on the alert. they go. The porpoises suddenly alter direction and veer to start. Only Captain Frank's experience keeps us on their trail. He must maneuver the Geronimo so that Boots is positioned just above the racing porpoises. Our plan of capture is based first on the knowledge that these are not fish, but air-breathing mammals, like whales. So they can't stay under too long. And second, that they love to play beneath the bow of a ship. If they'll do that, Boots may be able to net one when it comes to the surface for air. But the whole trick is to do it when the porpoise is not looking. If he sees the net coming, he's off like a flash. didn't time it right. You can see how he feels about it. We'll have to start all over again. These mammals hear well. 
they can see and they have a built-in echolocation sense, like a sonar system. They're exceptionally intelligent, so they certainly know they're being followed. But they're smart enough to keep an eye on boots and stay just out of reach. It's almost as if they were teasing us. really back-breaking work, but if we don't catch one now, we're in trouble because our fuel is running low. The sky's overcast and it looks like a squall's approaching. Once more, Boots is maneuvered back into position. It's now or never. Boots, take a chance. He got it. Benny's ready with the line. No snags as it goes out. And there he is. taking almost all our line. This is all we've got. At last he slows. The line's holding. We've roped a great big fighting corpus. to land it. We have to go out and get it with the skiff. Hauling it aboard the Geronimo would injure our prize, and we must hurry, because porpoises have been known to slip out of the net lasso. Ralph Nelson goes underwater to film the capture. With three of us in one small skiff, we're going to have problems landing the porpoise without capsizing. <laughs> He's putting up a terrific struggle. He's so strong, he pulls us around like a horse dragging a cart. At last, Benny gets him alongside. And he almost capsizes us. Luckily, Benny and I kept a hold of the line, otherwise we'd have lost him. A 
Again, he gets away, and this time takes most of the line. We have to start hauling him in all over again. He's pretty exhausted by now. The struggle's taken a lot out of him. But it's taken a lot out of us, too. Fighting a 200-pound porpoise can tax anyone's strength after a time. Even when he's next to the skiff, it's difficult to grab the net with him struggling. Finally, we land him. He put up some fight. Our prize is to be flown back to the mainland by helicopter. It's quicker than going back by sea. He'll travel in this stretcher. In less than an hour, our porpoise will be in Marineland's giant oceanarium. The sun breaks through as John Prescott in the copter arrives on the scene. Hooking up the stretcher should be fairly easy. is made. Our porpoise is safely airborne. But hold on, something's wrong. One of the lines from the stretcher is foul, and the porpoise might slip out. While John watches anxiously, we clear the line. And then, once again, our valuable cargo is hooked up, ready for its journey to the mainland. A sea mammal, caught in the ocean, flies through the air. The last act of our incredible adventure in search of a porpoise. Our porpoise is back at Marineland now, performing in their famous aquatic show. When it comes to performance in the field of health insurance, you can count on Mutual of Omaha. All the creatures we caught on the Geronimo were transported safely to Marineland. Some will go on exhibit for the pleasure of all. Others, like the highly intelligent porpoise, may appear in one of their famous aquatic shows. Zoos and oceanariums such as this provide scientists the opportunity to observe and study at close range the inhabitants of our lands and seas. They also provide for young and old alike an understanding and love for all the creatures that inhabit the Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom.
Like what you saw? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more exclusive content. And visit our website at wildkingdom.com. Mutual of Omaha. Protect your kingdom.